coming up next. The Cebuano entrepreneurial spirit is truly alive. Many industries and businesses find its roots situated here in Cebu. Today, we learn from a simple entrepreneur who has in no way created an empire that is definitely not simple. From uh, his humble beginning, starting from his family's backyard, to owning 50% of the world's market share in exports of these favorite little snacks, the Philippine brand dried mangoes. Let's all learn from the mango king himself, Mr. Justin Uy. Ako si Paolo Varela, mabuhi ka subuanon. A pioneer in the dried mango industry in Cebu, Pro Food started in 1978 as a small fledgling business with only seven employees, led by a brave young man with a strong entrepreneurial spirit. Justin Uy, a precocious businessman who at age 12 started selling cigarettes, then at 15 got into the shellcraft business, and at 18 operated a poultry enterprise. He recognized the potential of the mango export market and turned the challenges facing the export industries to market Cebu's exquisitely sweet mangoes to the world. Today, Pro Food has grown to be a 6,000-strong company with their products marketed extensively in 27 other countries all over the world. Cebu's pride for having made a mark in international trade as a genuine and innovative Cebuano company imbued with a strong, indomitable, and entrepreneurial spirit of the Cebuano, Justin Uy. Today we have the prime opportunity to learn from a stalwart entrepreneur, 2009 Garbo Sa Subo Awardee, 2009 Entrepreneur of the Year from uh, the Cebu Chamber of Commerce, and at the same time, 2011 MVP Bossing Awardee, we have uh, none other than the owner of Pro Food International Corporation, Mr. Justin Uy. Sir, mayong buntag, may adlaw ni mo, sir. Mayong buntag, good morning also. Thank you for, so much for having us, indeed. Uh, we, we have uh, a lot of history to tackle with, about your life at the same time with uh, the growth of your empire. And uh, we definitely have this beautiful opportunity to learn from you and um, we, we, we're delving it right now. Sir, you consider yourself to, you, to be an ordinary kid when you started. You, yeah. you have humble mm -hmm. beginnings, um, sharing a household of 11 siblings. Mm -hmm. um, tell us, how was your environment when you were growing up? How, how did your, your family bring you up to a certain degree that your mindset is very business-minded, even at a young age? Uh, it was a very normal family. From a, I have a Chinese uh, family background. So practically it's just a normal family we're in. Uh, it's come from a big family, and we, my parents sent us to school. After school, always have to uh, work together with them, run errands for them, and uh, just do the normal way. Your father used to be, he, he was a, what was his He was occupation? a cigarette distributor in Visayas, Mindanao. So at the young age of 12, he will send me off uh, to, with the salesman to check if uh, the account or something like uh, auditor, a job of auditor to check the job of a uh, salesman if they're doing properly. So even even at that age, you trained na ka in a way. You were being trained by your father to get into business. Yeah, I learned my business from uh, my dad. Uh, he's in distribution in buy and sell. Nakaingon ka sir at at one point you said that the reason why you got into entrepreneurship is because it's a it's a way of surviving. Yes, uh, during those time when my dad business was going down, so somehow I was thinking of helping uh, one way or another to help survive the family, the big family. Even at a young age, as a matter of fact, um, even when he was in his, his teens, he was already start striving with uh, with different entrepreneurial aspects. Uh, you went early into business with fashion jewelry, shellcraft, uh, poultry, 
yes. and even mushroom growing. Yeah, that's right. At, at this point, I think you were around 15 years old. Sakto ba, sir? Yeah, I started 15 up to when I reached 19. That's where I started the mango, the mango business. business. Yeah. How about school, sir? How did you how did you balance it out? Uh, whenever I'm done in school, that's uh, where I start with the business also. So work for them. How did these early businesses mold you, sir? Um, ang ako ang question. You had different aspects and different enterprises. Na you went on from 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 shellcraft to to poultry even how what made you decide to let them go actually uh, it was just looking at opportunity uh, when we started the shellcraft business on that time shellcraft was a big business in Cebu, especially Cebu the problem is a six months business because after during the winter months nobody buys shellcraft yes, jewelry yes. Because in the developed countries in the U.S. and Europe, they wear coats so nobody sees their jewelry, so they don't buy. So I see this doesn't have a future, so I have to shift it to poultry. With poultry, we started uh, quite promising, but at, at the end with lack of capital, and uh, it makes me going nowhere. So at the end, also have to stop it because you don't have the capital to go uh, to raise up a chicken to lay eggs yes. so then on that time mango was so abundant that even the farmers don't harvest during the mango season because there's no buyer even then at that early age as a teenager you saw the opportunities and if if it's not right you let go of it you move on that's right just uh, keep on uh, looking for opportunity and uh, a long-lasting one. And that's where you found the, the mango industry. As what you said, atong panahon na, ang mga farmers, they weren't even harvesting kay wala, ka, wala, ay, wala, wala pa business. How did you get it growing? Actually, uh, my auntie was doing it in a uh, kitchen and me and one my brother picked it up and do it as a business. So we started small in 1978 at the backyard scale and then continued to grow. I remember uh, we have competition from the original ones. So I have to look for other markets aside from Philippine market because we have no chance. That's why in 1980, we made our first export to Hong Kong. When you saw the opportunity, you went into the, the dried mango business. At the same time, there was competition. So you, you went out, you exported. Yeah, actually, uh, it is not Everything is not smooth. In the first two years, we lost everything because we come out with a bad product. And, uh, ah, trial and error, yeah. pa, starting with a... Then there's, we cannot compete with those who are ahead of us in the local market. How did you get to a point that you got the sakto nga timpla, sakto nga perfect mix of how we have it now in terms of Philippine brand? Actually, it's just a do or die. If you stop, you die also. If you do better, you continue doing until you die. So it had to be never say no because you lost everything already. When you started exporting to Hong Kong, was Pro Food already existing then? Uh, on that time was still, uh, and during the Marcos time, they have the cottage industry under the Sida. Uh, it was not yet the Pro Food. It was until 1986 when Pro Food was formally incorporated. Starting from uh, minimum, maximum 10 people in the backyard. Yeah. And by 1986, that's when you, you ventured into making it to a corporation. Yeah. Uh, as you were starting, at, at that time, strictly dried mangoes, lang ta, sir, or did you also delve into other products yeah, already? Strictly early? dried mango. Yeah, the facility is very small. We started with uh, sun drying, then goes to machine, one machine drying. Dried mangoes literally are the backbone. It's the backbone That's of, right. of the industry in that you've right made. Now, uh, we are proud that dried mango become an icon name for Philippines. Yes. That's true, as a matter of fact. That's uh, one of the reasons why you have one of the biggest share markets in the world in terms of exporting dried mangoes. Yeah, you're right. It's, it's, yeah. A, it's a huge thing if you think about it, uh, especially coming from Cebu, which is why we're very, very proud of what, what you've uh, gotten from a backyard industry into a Worldwide industry, as a matter of fact. When you were starting, sir, at that time, how you felt the, the, the pressure from the competition? But as you were starting to export and starting to 
build your name after the two years and getting the Timpla perfect. How did you get to you know, edge out the competition already? Well, as I've said, it's all hard work. Uh, you've been working 18 hours a day for, the wow, for 18 yes. years. And uh, trying to learn more by studying, because I graduated a chemical engineering course, mm -hmm. so during my study also, I apply what is being used, uh, required in the plant. That's applicable, definitely, yes. Yeah. Very nice. At, at the same time, that, that made you get to all of these different ingredients yeah, right. and all of these different uh, variants of what your products are. Oh, that's great, sir. In 1986, when you, when you started and created the Proof Food International Corporation, initially you were catering towards the local market and then you started exporting. And then that's when the boom came out. Actually, we started exporting in 1980. By 1986, we're exporting to about five countries already. Five countries already. My boom really came out in 1993-94 when I was able to get a sizable loan from TLRC to modernize the plant. Because by uh, modernization, uh, I can upgrade the quality of my products and then I can penetrate the developed countries. Yes. And that was your prime target at the right. time, definitely, yeah. sir, right? Uh, and at the same time, yes, from, from five countries exporting within, within that uh, decade into more than 50 countries now. Yeah, like, more than 40 more, countries. More, yeah, almost. Yes, uh, almost 50 countries that yeah. you're exporting worldwide. And yes, as what we said, um, they do have 80% share. They have 80% share of, of the market in Japan. They have 50% of export share in the whole world for dried mangoes. And that's definitely a feat that I would have to bow down to, I have to say, mm -hmm. sir. At this point, you've modernized, you've um, gotten to a point that uh, you, you started exporting. What particular things did you have, sir, that, that uh, raises the standard to a point that you've gotten to where you are right now? One is we develop our human resources. We are very good Filipino pe workers. So that's one, one asset we have really in the company because as you will see, you employ a lot of people and if you have discipline, good people, eventually you'll have a good quality product. Secondly, we are very eager to learn more. In fact, we invest in new, fa new facilities, new equipment to upgrade our standards. So in fact, I we start all packing for the multinational companies such as Del Monte, Coca-Cola, Nestle, is to learn from their system and apply it over here. You mentioned earlier that um, you encountered setbacks earlier within your first couple of years in the business. Uh, you got to a point that you developed your flavor and then you, you modernized the whole system and you made a, a, it into what it is now. What problems, what other problems did you get to encounter? that were what, what you consider mo, huge challenges sad, para ni mo, eh, as, as pro food na sad also. Then what did you do to maintain a steady presence in the market? Actually, there's many problems, but it call, comes in uh, stages. So in the early, early part of the business, my biggest problem is financial. So where to get the capital to build a plant, to have a ro uh, revolving fund, to buy the fruits and store and sell during the off season. So the biggest challenge is uh, actually capital. So uh, initially, I have to borrow from friends, relatives, because you don't build any credit line and the bank won't uh, give you any, any uh, credit. So once you build up uh, the name and the bank, st the bank started loaning you uh, from- So why uh, are you a risk? Definitely. It's all risk. All risk. It's, it's all, all risk. risk. Yeah. There's no guarantee. That's why you have to put everything on you, hard work, whatever you know. So to be in business is not only hard work also. You got to have the capital and you got to have the know-how. And so right from the start, sir, when you started with the, the dried mangoes industry, with the business, right from there, you ka nga mas lucrative siya compared to 
like poultry and, and all your other businesses, like the, the shell crafts and, and even mushroom culture? Uh, What's the point? I'm sticking with this one. Yeah, the, 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 the first thing is there was so much abundant of mango in that time. So I can get credit from the farmers. Utangun sa bayaran tika ni human. Secondly, I can foresee it's a unlimited market. So there's a future for growth. So that's why I stick to this business. So you have to really take all of the possibilities in, and weigh yeah. it properly. You have yeah. to judge well. If you want to be a good entrepreneur, you need to take a, have a good sight of what your business is. You're right. You, you got to know to understand your business. How has the competition in these modern times na? Has there been a competition na naabot sa point na nakaingon ka? Even now, that even, even with the fact that you have 50% of the export share in the world, in terms of dried mangoes and your products particularly, naabay competition na mura ga, ga singit singit o palingkamot na nakakuha sa inyo ang market share? Yeah, uh, my competition are mostly now outside the Philippines. We are talking to like Vietnam, Thailand, uh, China. Even China now have mangoes. Before they don't have mangoes, but now they are world number three production of mangoes. Because of industry, they see the industry in it. Wow. Also, the Chinese government is really helping the farmers to develop the fruit. But they still don't have the dried mango industry, but they're developing it now. Wow. Oh, that, that's a very mm -hmm. looming industry, if you that's think about right. it. Because mm -hmm. China's just taking out everything. Yeah. So, um, in, in that sense, sir, like, uh, with what you said, in terms of how you just maintain the market, you keep hard work, the discipline of, of uh, your factory, and, and maintain what qualities that you've had. You, you have a lot of quality certificates, as a matter of fact. Yeah, yeah. Because of competition, uh, we already foresee that we have to be ahead of your competitor. Mm -hmm. To be ahead is only two things. Build up your name. How do you build up your name? It's really to keep up your standards, have a quality certi international quality certificate so that your competitor can catch up with you. Secondly is to create more products. So we created over 100 products now out from 15 types of uh, tropical fruits mm. so that uh, we'll be a one-stop shop for tropical fruit and uh, this will put us in a label like Del Monte and Dole when you're talking about pineapple people will just say Del Monte and Dole and if you're in that label you're at least safe from competition you already have a huge share of the market that's why you really need, really need to maintain it that's yeah. true how do you maintain that though, on a managerial sense? How do you maintain the, the discipline and the standard that you set on the people, on the workers? Especially if you have as much as 6,000 employees. Uh, we, first of all, you have to input a standard. There got to be a guide. So these quality certificates are our guide. Second, you have to encourage your worker. Uh, give them incentives to work for it. And now you've put out a Filipino product in, out into the world market. You've created a mango industry from surplus and one that creates jobs from 10 in the backyard to thousands in employee with bases in Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. So this, this whole empire that, that has become Pro Food International Corporation Earlier on though, even with your entrepreneurial spirit, I have to ask, sir, would you have otherwise ventured into other fields? Uh, maybe like, maybe did you ever dream about becoming a doctor, an engineer? Uh, my father asked me to take up a professional course is for me to get a good job. <laughs> because he came from a dis distribution of cigarettes. So his plan is to introduce me to be a chemist in a cigarette factory. Ah. Yeah. But uh, I think my type of person is not fit for those kind of jobs. But I think, I think with his training, even earlier on, you definitely got off from your father's entrepreneurial side. Yeah, somehow we got from, uh, uh, 
our father really guide us on it also. It's, that's really great, sir. It, he was the one who wanted you to take up a, a professional course. Wow, I think. Still, entrepreneurship is the path that you chose. That's and, right. And yeah. it was the path that was laid for you, in a way. Right? Because by being an entrepreneur, you can also help a lot of people, and you can also help the country. Yes, that's true. I have a few questions that I would want to throw at you. These are just best eight. These are the best eight things that you consider in your life. So, you are the first thing that would come out in your mind, just say it out and you can explain why if you'd like. What's the best trait or attitude to have as an entrepreneur? The best is uh, you can do anything you want and uh, by doing it, you're satisfied of what you're doing and you're helping a lot of people. What's the best food or meal to come home to? What's your favorite dish, sir? My normal dish is noodles during my younger days. Noodles? Because that's the easiest to cook. <laughs> it's the fastest and easiest to do. <laughs> and you, sa gutom. When, after a day work, you're so tired, you want to go to sleep. <laughs> What's the best country to partner with in terms of export? Uh, I would say Japan is one of the best country to partner with because the people have uh, uh, the integrity and uh, they also not only do look at you as a somebody as a supplier but really look up look after you teach you how to do things what's the best part of town your favorite spot in cebu uh, my favorite spot in cebu is cebu city cebu city yeah any yeah. any place in particular that you'd like to you know spend an afternoon at you know, take a leisure time out I, I used to during weekends go to the beach just to uh, relax, uh, relax. relax. But uh, lately, don't have those uh, time ready. Really, luxury? That's yeah. become a luxury to know. So, um, right now, favorite place is, because I have all guests almost every night, is in the hotel lobby. What's the best techie gadget that you find most helpful in business? Uh, my BlackBerry phone helped me a lot. Uh, <laughs> I'm always uh, in contact. In fact, I have two BlackBerry phones uh -huh. to make sure when I'm in a country, one of it will work. Yes, just to be sure, yeah. because at the, at the same time, of course, the, the connectivity of it all That's helps right. out, yes. What's the best place with family that you recently took a vacation in? Uh, the best place I took my family to begin was in Europe, because Europe, there's not much time for shopping. <laughs> it's more for together. It's more, it's more <laughs> sightseeing and together, being together, yeah. yes. Yeah. So we're veer away from the shopping aspect, that's true. What's the best thing about starting a business in Cebu? What do you mean the best thing? In terms of why would you want to put up a business in Cebu? Why should you put up a business in Cebu? The best thing to put up a business in Cebu is you have all the facilities. You have a very good uh, government background here they help you a lot and you have the peace and order and which really is needed to grow your business and practically you have everything on uh, on what a big city has and sir what do you think about the cebu market well, um, it, the industry that we have here in cebu not just not just on the on the mango industry but but business in general um, if you could rate it from 1 to 10 in terms of development, how would you rate Cebu development now? I would say, I'd say as a food, the market in Cebu uh, is uh, one of the best. When I say the best, most of the big companies use Cebu as the trial. Uh, because as a trial? As a trial market. Wow. If it sells in Cebu, it definitely will sell throughout the country. Wow. Yeah. Particularly, why do we have a, a taste, a, a, a mood in terms of the people? Uh, I think Cebu is because don't have much natural resources, so people become more creative, more uh, curious, and want to try on new items. Uh, in other words, more open-minded. We're very open-minded, so that's a good thing. Wow, that's a that's a very nice way of putting it, sir. In terms of um, having this much and wanting to explore, being open-minded, that's yeah. what Cebuanos are. That's very nice. 
you have many advocacies that you support, not only in the industry that you have, you, of course, uh, go negosyo, uh, the progression of small and medium enterprises, which, of course, you started out from. Um, you help agriculture setting factories in Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao, even putting up avenues for tourism. Of course, we're here at the gallery, the Pro Food Gallery, which is, uh, uh, we have a lot of visitors, foreign visitors, That's every right. day. Um, at, the, at the same time, you also have a mall. Well, you're part of, uh, you've invested in a mall and at the same time, a hotel. Now, mm -hmm. you have different thrusts that you've developed in throughout the years. How do you spot the opportunities and decide on making them your business? I mean, how do you grab the opportunity when you see them? I think it's just a natural occurring that once you see something you want to do, and I think ProFood Trust right now is going more on tourism. In fact, ProFood Gallery was set up basically for tourists and also as for the Philippines as a whole. Because I travel all over the world. I went to many showrooms. Like if you go to Hawaii, you go to uh, Dole Pineapple Plantation Tour. We just show you the farm, that's all. But here we show you the products, the processing, and it had a very good impression to the tourists that they would like to come back in the future. And hotel and malls are also for tourism. Aside from uh, creating jobs, you are creating something where the tourists would love to come again. Of course, you've uh, stomped that foot and, and solidified that the concept of pasalubong is best done with Philippine brand products. Yeah, you're right. That's yeah. great. Now you, we see you in malls, we see you in, um, in, at the airports. So you've placed yourself very hugely in the market. Yeah, we have a big pasalubong shop upstairs. In fact, we're trying to create even more new products so that uh, it can uh, give Philippines a, a good name. How can you maintain your stature and presence in your endeavors, especially in such a cutthroat world of business? Like, I know that you, you've put the foundation to see the pro food um, industry grow into what it, it is now and even beyond. How do you keep on maintaining that? And what do you see Pro Food International Corporation to become in 10 years, 20 years from now? Uh, pro Food uh, have a very good future because we're dealing with food. And uh, we're expanding in development, property development which you will see that the tycoons like the shoe mart, how they started. So these are the two fronts we're going to. I would see it will be a very promising one. And I hope one day Pro Food will be a byword for everybody, not only in the Philippines, but in the world. Sir, I just have one more question. Yeah. Being the mango king of the Philippines and the world, having 50%, that's like, I'd have to say that's half it. That's half the, the export share in the whole world. What makes the Philippine mango special? You have to believe in the fruit. And the fruit has really the best characteristic. It's the most less fibrous mango fruit, the best texture, and the best uh, combination of sweet and tangy. So Thanks. it has, yeah. you, you can say that it has uh, the qualities of the Filipinos. It have, it's, it's a very unique one that it's only grown in the Philippines. The same variety grown in Australia doesn't, doesn't produce the same yes, quality. Yes. So it has to be here, it has to be in the Philippines. That's the reason why we get these beautiful products. The way yeah, you have to you pass through many typhoons. Yes. Thank you so much, sir, for the insight. And uh, we uh, are very honored, of course, to have you with us here today. From seeing you um, starting out, striving at, at a very early age, it makes us, of course, see into the possibility that Anybody can be an entrepreneur. That's a fact. Anybody yeah. can be an, an entrepreneur. But you have to have these specific things and have to play at it in a specific way to make it work. You have to be consistent. You have to be consistent at it too. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for all You're the insight. Welcome. And of course, Mr. Justin Uy, mabuhi ka. Salamat ka. Yes. Thank you. So Thank you. So. Nobody ever said hard work would do you no good because it always will. Add that with uh, a little bit of integrity, honor, and a keen sense of business and you might find yourself in the right path to be an effective entrepreneur and as what Mr. Justin Uy said there will always be risks if you are able to coast through that then survive you shall bring out the exemplary entrepreneur in all of us 
Ako si Paolo Varela, maukiniang mabuhi ka sa buwanon.